I V M. Hi everybody, welcome to episode 84 of Shunya 1. We have a really good one coming up for you. Gaurav Munjal, the founder of Unacademy is with us and uh, we have a really interesting conversation around the ideas of what's going to happen in, in the space of education and technology, why they are looking at the kind of platform that they are looking at. I think it's a really interesting conversation that you'll really enjoy. Also, just to keep you guys informed about what's going on on the Slack channel, last week we did a simple poll asking what is your favorite computer game format? And you know, the uh, answers were surprising Surprisingly, even between single-player games, multiplayer games, and live streaming games. I guess everybody likes everything. But uh, we'll have another poll for you this week. And uh, with that, let's get you on with your show. All right. Welcome to the show, Gaurav. Thanks for uh, making the time. It's good to have you back in Bombay. Yeah. Uh, you used to be a Bombay founder. Now you're a Bangalore founder. I, I would still like to call myself as a Bombay founder. I think uh, it's been, what, 10 months after I'm coming back to Bombay. And then I thought I'll call you up. And this has been long pending. Yes, it and has. And I thought we should do it now. Absolutely. And this is also my first podcast ever. Awesome. So you never, uh, never done one before? No. Really? But... Yeah, he's he's uh, of course uh, well, I, I, done a I, bunch I, of other. Yeah, no, that's just it because you're in so much video and so much yeah, stuff. Yeah. Just generally, surprised you've never done a podcast before. Yeah, I, I haven't. Okay, well, good. that's a that's a good debut, uh, <laughs> and of course, uh, we we definitely oh, want hopefully to, no controversies. We uh, will find out. We'll try and create them if we can't find any. <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually a good point for us to quickly jump onto your story so far, right? Because you've uh, been a this is. The second time around you're a founder or the third time around you're a founder? Technically second. Technically second. And uh, and of course, uh, Anagarbi is now scaled up to uh, a very large scale at tech player, uh, doing a lot of things. If you could, you know, tell us how this all came to be. And of course, a little bit of perspective on where it's going, uh, even before maybe Anagarbi. I think uh, I'm, I'm one of those guys who uh, probably the word entrepreneurship was came later to define what I have been doing but I think it was back in 6th standard when I told my dad that I want to be a computer engineer and I have been building products for as long as I remember like in 7th standard I built this uh, KBC uh, version for my classmates and um, nice. because I loved coding since like 5th standard, 6th standard it was logo, it was QBasic and then it was C++, Java right. yeah and uh, I've been all, always been fascinated by building stuff. And uh, obviously, there is one programming as a career in which you learn programming and then you get a job and then you build stuff for others. And then there is there is programming uh, like an art where you want to just build stuff. Right. And I think I have been... Uh, in that way, I would like to call myself as an artist because I've always uh, been fascinated by the art of building something new, or for example, whether uh, it was my school's website or whether it was that KBC program I built when I was 13, 14 years old or then bunch of stuff in college, Flat Door 2 came in college and Academy in fact started as a YouTube channel in college. Yeah, It was just about building things and uh, I think the title of being an entrepreneur or funding or founder, all these came later but... I have been doing this for as long as I can remember. Yeah, those are titles which when it becomes a business, I believe, and yeah. you make it a serious career path. But you're right on the building part. Most of most founders I know have started with uh, tinkering or building yeah. uh, and of course, and then discovering means and ways to make it into a business. You mentioned you started this as a YouTube channel first, right? What was your incentive to even build a education linked or training linked YouTube channel. Why Why that? It was just a video that I uploaded for a bunch of my classmates. I used to live in Juhu during my college and my classmates, we had an exam the next day and classmates were a little far away. So they asked me for a particular topic and instead of going to their place and explaining them, I just made the video. Oh yeah, which year was this? And 2010. 2010 YouTube was of course prevalent but no one was doing 
ट्रेनिंग वीडियोज और एजुकेशनल वीडियोज राइट आई थिंक इट वॉज मोस्टली वॉट अनबॉक्सिंग वीडियोज वॉर जस्ट अबाउट स्टार्टिंग मे बी और नॉट इवन देर यूट्यूब का टू थाउजेंड सेवन राइट नो नो आई थिंक then of course flat dot to happen where you actually productized again it was for students so, so i went to direct type yeah. first i yeah. worked uh, like i did a job for one year right and then uh, during the time at direct i i kind of took permission from the company that, that uh, allow me to build this product and right. uh, i think as soon as my one year got over where i had to no longer return the bonus i kind of quit <laughs> i think it was the exact i think i joined on 18th june 2012 when I left on 19th June 2013 nice. because if I had to quit before one year I had to pay like the bond you would have to two, forgive three. the bond do yeah. they still do that in companies nowadays I haven't heard about it since I mean, our time. we also have it at an academy so oh you do <laughs> <laughs> okay that's new okay. It, it, it's called a retention bonus I Correct. mean like they would uh, I mean for for example they paid us around one or two lakhs and then if you quit before one year then you have to return that money hmm. okay right. so I, I think that's a little different than what you are thinking of with the bond right there was a time when you had to pay money to get get a job no 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 nothing yeah, nothing yeah. Like that. I think it, that's it, it, it was it was a bonus that they had given right. which you had to return if you quit before one year correct. Yeah. That was a clawback, basically. Mm-hmm. But my what I was trying to get at was you were trying to always solve problems which you had in a way, or you were directly faced with, right? So I mean, I, as I said, I I have been um, I meet entrepreneurs these days, and I meet investor turn entrepreneurs. I meet all different kinds of people who want to start company for for starting a company, and what they do is they try to figure out oh what is a big market where. Uh, where will we get investment or what is the hot sector right now mm. i don't think it ever worked like that with me i mean mm. uh, uh by ch- i i think you you try to solve a problem you just uh, ensure that it's big enough and there are a lot of people who have this problem and luckily for us education is a big market and we kind of started getting defined by the market later on mm-hmm. but when we were building it like when uh, when i quit or when roman quit and himesh quit we we were a youtube channel doing a million video views a month that time and we thought that we could empower more teachers and this could be big and right. stuff like that but uh, the goal was never that how big it will be or whether we'll be a unicorn or is the market big enough we knew education is a in villages in india in three tier cities and two tier cities it's a big enough problem that people don't have access to great educational content mm-hmm. people don't have access to great teachers right so we just wanted to get those teachers online and let their content be accessed by a lot of people for free and then eventually also figure out a way to monetize right and it as like you said it started literally with that channel becoming more and more popular yes before yes. before you actually jumped off and when you said quit i think that that's where the story of the last the first stint as a founder of uh, flat dot 2 which also got acquired yeah uh, also is there so what was your learning in that chapter of your life because again you f- did build something for a unique use case i wouldn't say it was it scaled up to a huge number when you got acquired right uh, but you did and I, then, I, in fact i have a lot of learnings from the flat dot 2 stage the number one being don't have random angel investors <laughs> I mean, I mean, when you say random what does that mean? I mean so so I raised money from Akrit and uh, we couldn't uh, raise the next round I was out in the market we were talking to Bloom we were talking to a bunch of other people somehow because uh, magic breaks housing other people were already there it was becoming difficult for us to raise the next round so Correct. I think we were about to get a round in which involved five six angel investors uh, don't want to name them but uh, and and i could see that it would end up taking the company in a direction where i mean it it will stop being about innovating or it will stop being about the product it will just be it will just become about the dhanda mm-hmm. and uh, even at the angel stage so there were folks who were no no this is this so so, so I, 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 I had a great relationship with akrit in fact i had breakfast with him uh, this morning Right. Uh, yeah, and he's been on our podcast. It's yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I should hear that one. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and see if he has mentioned me. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, but then I started speaking to Sumit from Common Floor, and 
I think uh, that kind of, uh, I mean, that conversation went in a good direction. I told him I'm about to raise round. He's like, why don't you partner with us? Right. And again, it was not acquisition for the sake of acquisition. It was that Sumit liked me and I liked Sumit. Right. And we realized that uh, he is someone who has solid sales operations, uh, building the business experience. And I come with a background where I can help them and probably flat dot too with product and marketing right which has been uh, my strong suits right so i think uh, that kind of worked uh, they called me to bangalore i went to bangalore the only bad part about the whole thing was that i had to leave bombay <laughs> but uh, <laughs> bangalore is not too bad but right. it's not bombay so. that's that's what we like to hear yes, and we, we hear again and again but yeah. but that's an interesting point you made i think uh, not 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 controversial enough yet to we'll get into it but this this is definitely something which happens a lot right you are faced at a decision where it's more money with uh, which is capital for you to do what you want but it comes with these riders or you think it comes with a potentially uh, bad sort of relationship with your future investors right so that's what you foresaw i mean it was more about uh, someone who is aligned with your vision so, so there, there is a rule of thumb i mean yeah. if, if you're raising money from an angel investor make sure they have a tech background so mm -hmm. there are a lot of angels in mumbai who might not have a tech background right and uh, i'm i'm not sure that if that's a good idea for a tech company because so, of mismatched expectations basically yeah even the kind of questions they ask or something like that so uh, uh, fortunately i never had that experience so for when when we raised money for an academy i got rajan and vijay and sachin bini uh, fanindra sama and bunch of and and in fact every person that we got on board had a, a tech background or had experience in angel investing and stuff like that so so i knew Right. what kind of right angel investors to pick and of course we had uh, bloom from the starting right. backing us so it it has been a great journey that way i actually remember when you were planning to or i think you had just quit uh, flat dot yeah i had uh, i had told you to also invest yeah. but you didn't <laughs> <laughs> and listen i i had no money I still have no money to invest in startups yeah, but, yeah your instagram so, stories uh, but, <laughs> but uh, I remember Tell me catching how up much money you with, have. with you in Bangalore, uh, with you and Roman, and we even shot a video. I remember, yeah, yeah. and at that time you were closing your round with all these, I would say, five star angels who you just mentioned, right? Yeah. And it, even though you were, of course, it was your second time around as a founder, so you came with some, I would say, background of doing a successful business and exit. How hard was it to actually get these? people on board and how did you actually go about reaching them i mean this is again something which it looks great for the rockstar founders it who does. actually do it but i think how uh, did it happen? what what i did differently where a lot of other entrepreneurs don't do it fundraising is a full time job for the initial years or months or whatever you want to call it you have to focus on fundraising or someone in the team has to focus on yeah fundraising. Yeah, I mean, someone yeah. in the team. So I must have pitched or Roman and me must have pitched to more than 60, 70 people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we faced few rejections, but most of them liked the product and our pitch got better. We we got more clarity. And this was obviously, uh, these angels came at a round where the product was built and we had traction and stuff like that. But uh, when the first round we did, which was pre-product, uh, that that's when also we got Rajan and Fanindra Sama okay. and bunch of this. Now, ob obviously, it helps that uh, you are from a product background or you have started a company before and Correct. stuff like that. But I think uh, what what they look at is they look at the founders, they look at the team, they look at what you're building. Is the problem big enough? Is the problem innovative enough? But more than anything, I think uh, founders just don't. Uh, I mean, especially if you want to build a consumer business and you know that you will need money from day one. Mm -hmm. Founders don't take fundraising that as seriously as they should. I mean, we like see... We focus of at how much attention you give it. Like, wake up every day, it's first fundraising. Is that what you're saying? Like, when no, you, you say... So, it's a, it's a long process. You, you know, if... if there are times like when 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 I met... When we met Sachin Bansal, he committed us close to a crore in... And after an hour. Or mm -hmm. Sujit Kumar, who committed close to $100,000 after an hour. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of the times, it's building a relation, maybe one or two meetings, uh, sending them updates on WhatsApp or email, and then following up. And right. then 
लाइक शैलेंद्र से कोया वी वी यूज टू चैट ऑन ट्विटर एंड देन आई सेंट हिम अ फ्यू अपडेट्स ऑन ई मेल एंड देन वेन ही वॉज इन बैंगलोर ही वॉज लाइक लेट्स कैच अप सो आई आई हैव दिस हैबिट ऑफ सेंडिंग अपडेट्स टू इन्वेस्टर्स आई डिड नॉट येट हैव बट आई वॉन्टेड टू हैव सो दिस इज आफ्टर द सीरीज ए राउंड वेन आई वॉज ट्राइंग टू रेज सीरीज बी I used to be in touch with investors, and I used to send them updates. Okay, you know this is what's happening. This is the latest these on us. Are the, yeah. These are the DAUs. These are the number of teachers we have. This is the retention metrics. These are the activation numbers. And uh, I think, as a rule of thumb, the more uh, the more founders uh, send update to their existing as well as their potential investors. I think uh, I think it's a good practice to have, which we followed. And being transparent with all this, not holding these back or being cagey about it. So these are like cross. Oh, obviously, stats. I mean we were we were also growing. I mean we still yeah. are growing, so it it helps that uh, the numbers looked good. It it yeah. helps that the numbers are good. But when you do that, like let's say you do it every month, it kind of also pushes you to perform better mm-hmm. when you know you have to send an update. Correct. But coming back to the point that. If you are building a consumer product, it's its product, it's your distribution, it's uh, revenue, and it's fundraising, equally important. Correct. So you have to figure out the investors. You have to, and and obviously you have to get the right investors on board, right? Uh, with the, the right partners whom you have a chemistry with, because choosing a partner is like choosing a founder. The your co-founders and hence your investors yeah. also. You mean. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I'd push back a little bit on some of what you're saying, right? I agree with you generally. In an ideal situation, and you found yourself in a situation which you worked hard at, but was pretty much as good a situation as you could kind of come at, right? For a lot of people, it becomes a uh, it becomes a lot tougher to be, uh, you know, I mean. Uh, It's not. Sometimes you got to deal with what you got to deal with, right? I mean, like, and if you want to run a business and you want to kind of create something, then sometimes you are not going to be able to get exactly what you want in those things. So you have to be able to kind of roll with the punches, if you will. Like compromise on you do what you get. Yeah, everyone does. I'm guessing, yeah. but that's that's the. No, I didn't understand. Like compromise on like. So let's say your fundraising is not taking is taking too much time, and you still need more funds. Like, would you take the easy money? Clearly, sometimes the advice you do. I mean, is not to. Yeah. I I I don't know if it's always possible to just go. Uh, uh, it's not always possible as an entrepreneur to say that uh, I want money only from X Y Z type people. Sometimes you have to go where it is. You have to go where the check. I mean, is. but that that would be sacrificing the long term for the short term. Well, the, the, if you if the long term is not a possibility, if the short term is dire enough, you have to do that. That's, I guess, where the compromise yeah, begins, right? So, if you do it at stage one, then you have to make sure you have course corrected at stage two. Hopefully, yeah. that's the, I guess, the next chance you get. But coming to actually now, of course, the product you were building, right? So again, maybe things were aligned. You said it yourself. The space was big. The space was obviously uh, there's a lot which could have been solved, and you were doing that. How did you transition from the YouTube channel to the product, and what were the kind of insights, and how did tech help you? Of course, like. I'm sure there is a story behind why you chose video. Why you saw? How did you see that video worked? What did you innovate? Tell us about the product today and beyond. So, so I I have a theory that uh, an entrepreneur's life is number one. The journey begins, which is the phase one, is falling in love with the product, and the entrepreneur is obsessed about the product. The number two phase is falling in love with traction. The numbers that I'm getting so many views, or I'm getting DAUs, or something like that. and the third part of the journey is uh, falling in love with the business where you eventually build the business you get revenue you get the numbers and stuff like that so i think uh, for us as a youtube channel we have the numbers we have the distribution we build the product and eventually the focus was to build the business like for example i haven't coded for the last 4 years right so yeah. um, i i think uh, the last 3 years have been like my uh, A quick MBA in every direction uh, when it comes to learning about business, finance, operations, sales, revenue, bunch of other things related to the business. I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm also lucky to have uh, Imesh, who's the founder and the CTO of the company, and who was also with me at Flat Chat, um, and we we kind of share similar vision when it comes to the product or design or stuff like that. So he takes care of those things, and I look after the business. so 
I think then the journey was that what YouTube channel did was prove that uh, there is a need for it. Right. And uh, I I didn't see a lot of people in India building platforms then. I mean, now you have ShareChat, now you have a bunch of other platforms, but that time platforms were not being built. Right. And we realized that what Twitch did to gaming, can we do it to education? Mm-hmm. I mean, can we have like a sort of like a YouTube for education where teachers would come, upload their content, learners would access it, and then obviously figure out a way to monetize some part of it. And yeah, so uh, I would say we have been sort of successful in that way, but obviously there is a long way to right. go. Awesome. All mm-hmm. right. On that note, I think we're going to take a quick break, come back and talk some more. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another awesome week on the IBM Podcast Network. If you aren't following us on social media, please make sure that you are. We are IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you are following us on social media, I'm sure you know that it's our fourth anniversary this month. Yeah, IBM is four years old. We've done 3,500 plus episodes of content, and it's been an amazing ride with a lot of fun guests, a lot of fun content, and a lot of great hosts. We'd like to thank all of our hosts because without them, we wouldn't really be doing all that much. Also, I mentioned over the last couple of weeks that we're running a service survey right now a listener survey it's on ivmpodcast.com slash survey if you have not filled that out please do fill it up it'll help us figure out what is working for you what's not working and we'll give us some information that we can use to get some advertising on the show on the scene in the unseen Amit Burma is joined by author Srinath Raghavan they discuss the recent tensions between India and Pakistan its historical context and what the future may hold we're launching a new show called States of Anarchy about global affairs hosted by foreign policy enthusiast Thamsini Hariharan on how to citizen we move on to chapter 8 confronting marginalization Meghna and Shreyas are joined by creative director Joel Pereira, who draws from his professional and personal experiences to discuss the topic. On Advertising is Dead, Varun talks to executive editor of Rolling Stone, Nirmika Singh, about New Age journalism, what it takes to be a music journalist in India, the rise of Indian hip-hop, and a lot more. Also check out last week's episode with Gaurav Kapoor, founder of Oak Tree Sports and former VJ, who talks about his journey to becoming a sports presenter and what's missing in our sports content. On Gold Gappa, Tripti is in conversation with musician Karan Chitra Deshmukh. He talks about how he got into playing instruments and gives a glimpse of his talent on the show. On Geek Fruit, Tejas and Jishnu talk about their favorite classic TV shows and give their opinions on which can be potentially revived. Also check out last week's Bulletin, where they talk about IVM's fourth anniversary and their favorite shows on our network. And with that, let's continue with your show. All right, welcome back. There's some in a lot of innovations, of course, you've brought to the product in terms of even your thing. You do live classes now. You do uh, yeah, a yeah. whole well, bunch it, of it, other it, things it, it, with video. Right? Yeah, in number one, it started with the the creation tool, which right. is the educator app. I mean, it's it's how the teachers could simply create an educational lesson without the need of any software. Right. They could just like learn in a few minutes on how to upload an education lesson through our app which would like like what we did was we studied that a lot of innovation about creation of videos is happening on Snapchat on Instagram but mm-hmm. those are entertainment videos correct can we apply some some of those first principles and build an app which would make the creation of educational videos easy right and i think that that was uh, that was the biggest like the best thing that we did which helped us acquire a lot of teachers for example there are more than 20000 teachers on the platform and Around three to four thousand are active every month. Wow! And how does this compare today with? Again, you mentioned there are there were platforms in the rest of the world, maybe around education in various ways. There were a lot of, and there are a lot of these self-learn courses which you can subscribe. The Udemy's of the world and the so on, right? How did you find a niche which, in, apart from the distribution base and the fact that tier two, tier three needs it, what else is unique in the approach that you're using for India? I mean, uh, most of the solutions were focused uh, on the demand side of it. Mm-hmm. Like like a Coursera would tie up with the universities and they they would just say, we have the best courses and it would the demand. We wanted to kind of more like empower the teachers. and Individual empower, teachers. Yeah, empowering educators, for example. If there is someone sitting in three-tier city, that, there may be a case that that person teaches maths better than what someone in IIT Bombay teach. Right. But how would we know unless we give them the same platform? Right. This is what happened with TVF and AIB kind of using YouTube as a platform and uh, doing better stuff than the entire uh, TV. Like, like yeah, there is television. no show on television for at least the millennials or our, our kind of audience, which, right. I mean, what they did with pictures or what they did with permanent roommates or something like that. Right. So, so that's... I think that's... Yeah. Those that, that empowerment of teachers 
to teach well and uh, so 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 the top teacher on our platform is this guy called Mansoor Ali mm-hmm. who does 5 million video views a month wow. he teaches only in malayalam for a particular exam that happens in that region and oh. uh, creating free co- he creates like 10 videos every day and he has created a lot of free content and it's helping a lot of people wow okay that yeah that's a big number that's a huge number and again these are this is just one person like you said yeah. and that means there's for a specific exam in a specific region yeah. and of course we have a whole bunch of these other obviously national exams regional we have exams hundreds of exams yeah so. exactly and everything is centered around that how do you see how, how are you changing the behavior of your users i mean and i say users I mean students till now the the thing is that uh, smartphone penetration is increasing so they are getting smartphones but right. Uh, they they will either watch random youtube videos they will watch bbk wines or amit bhadana or something right. like that or they would play pubg but if you yeah. could give them good content also that they start consuming i think uh, i think see obviously it's because it's uh, asynchronous content and right. for the free content you're not paying so they need some certain sort of self motivation correct but at least now people with smartphones in any part of the country can't complain that they don't have good educational content right i mean that is available now it depends on their motivation whether they want to use it or whether they want to prepare for a particular exam or they want to play pubg <laughs> or something like that. so what and actually what i was mentioning was more like you know how we all have schools and university then college and so on right and you have teachers there so you enroll you have to do the course like that's your formal education doesn't go away you still have to do that yeah. but clearly there is something broken in formal education which mean which led students to go to classes private yeah. coaching private coaching evolved to now there are other players in this space who are doing private coaching on on an app yeah. right whereas you are doing something which is a complete two sided marketplace and three sided because we also take care of the quality correct so in You're a also way, doing yeah. qc in a way we ensure that what the what the learner is getting is actually the platform at least the paid product it's at least the platform's responsibility than right. the suppliers right so then what are you changing when it comes to at scale uh, the big vision uh, pitch i would say like what do you see changing the students life so uh, at scale what with. we are doing is what what we are saying is that the best teachers were so far limited to a particular coaching center or a particular city right now once you bring their content online like for example this guy mansoor ali is is one of the best teachers that i have seen once you bring his content online you give a level playing field to everyone everyone with a smartphone everyone with a slightly inherent motivation to learn and once they start learning that they can they are at the same level as someone who might have money to pay for a coaching center or you know who so so a lot of people are not going to coaching centers and are, are only relying on an academy correct because because we are focusing on the test prep market so i think that's that's changing because even in a coaching center let's say you have 10 teachers there is no guarantee that for every subject you'll have the best teacher right or or you'll and and the best teacher there is the definition of best teacher is very subjective right you might like someone the other might the other person might not like right. that person that teacher so in a way but once on an academy if you have hundreds of teachers for every subject i mean there are students also there are people who have topped those examination for example our top je teacher is a third year iit bombay student oh who teaches chemistry like uh, after his classes he makes the videos from his hostel and he is he's a great teacher he cracked that exam 3 years ago he loves chemistry and he is i think studying uh, he has some major in chemistry or something like that his name is sachin rana and uh, i think uh, that that's what happens when you start empowering these teachers and uh, who never thought they would teach right but now they are and and these guys would never teach offline these guys would never teach in a tuition center like i when i was teaching computer science i would never have thought that i would teach or roman would not have thought that he would teach but these are the people who who when given a platform to suddenly share their knowledge they would do that so you mentioned the word offline uh, it also brings me one more question that 
how do you solve for the reali- the otherwise interactivity which you would have gotten in the offline world right i mean not i'm not saying that everyone was in a class is always interactive like so most you people you should attend some of our live classes they are they are built very beautifully for example let's say the teacher is teaching suddenly the teacher would stop and say that answer this question for me a b c d is right. on the screen and then you select it right so it's like these are not just this is the obviously the paid product which is right. an academy plus correct these are not just a synchronous videos the live classes are synchronous where you are attending it live correct. you can ask doubts on chat you can interact with the teacher you can you can the teacher can ask questions and you can answer those questions right no of course and that's the actual simulation of uh, a live class but even in the asynchronous version uh do you see that from a feedback level is it that uh, the education being imparted when i'm just listening to a video versus going to a class is it uh, is it comparable because the teacher is better fundamentally maybe again it it boils down to self motivation right. i mean if if you are someone who needs to sit in a class see but we all know what sort of learning happens in classes also right. i mean it, like like the first 3 4 benches again the motivation plays a role correct i mean you cannot force just because somebody goes to a coaching class or a school doesn't mean that they'll end up clearing an exam or getting good grades it comes down to motivation what what we can do is we can provide them the best content a level playing field also the best teachers also motivate the students to learn more mm-hmm. they they use storytelling they make the subject interesting Th- th- this is all that we can do right. i mean we can't force people to like start studying right. i mean they have to at the end of the day that motivation has to come from themselves all right so leaving parting thoughts in terms of where you are heading now and what you see uh, an academy as down the line and of course what's the motiv- what do you think should be the motivation for a student to show up and use the product see the problem with the with the current system is that we should glorify companies which make money and stuff like that but we should not over glorify because they have raised so much money or like for example i see bejus uh, doing zero innovation i mean they don't the coaching classes it's on a, a it's it's a sales company i mean let's be honest about it it's a good business so investors will love it because at the end of the day investors care about their x money and they getting a multiple of 10 20 right. 30 whatever x right. and uh, yes it matters that how they got it but uh, uh, it it might not matter as much as it should also because there there may be a company which is innovating a lot but mm-hmm. not generating any revenue mm-hmm. that's also not a good case to be so i think what an academy has done is that um uh, it has brought certain level of innovation for example our top teachers are being poached by all the top online or offline players oh. like they get the calls because they became they started putting free content they started creating their own brand right. and now they get the calls which is a good thing so and i i think bejus has done a great job when it comes to k12 but there has been a lack of innovation i mean it's it's at the end of the day selling sort of like an encarta or a britannica encyclopedia mm-hmm. to people mm-hmm. and uh, uh, there will be a point that there there came a point where wikipedia was wikipedia just disrupted all of that right so i think uh, long run uh, when internet penetration goes even higher the platform like an academy will will continue to innovate and will solve the problem at scale whether it's for k12 or it's for test prep and uh, yeah we want to just continue building and uh, innovating and making it a better platform do you have uh, international plans or are mm-hmm. you are already are currently any anywhere else besides india we are in uh, indonesia and brazil okay. those are running as experiments okay. uh, in fact there is this exam called sbptn in indonesia we are i think the top in the top 3 players in the country mm-hmm. but uh, not more like an experiment no aggressive plans because it's a it's a, it's a platform kind of a product so we we don't need a team to be there right i mean we have around right. 50 teachers in mm. indonesia yeah only the quality control and everything that you mentioned right so you'll have to localize and un- your understanding of these areas 
But awesome. Thanks so much for that uh, brief call. I think we got we got some good uh, controversial uh, conversation there. So. I'm, I'm going to ask you to edit that. <laughs> but he but named names. Yeah, but uh, but we're good. I and this is again uh, congratulations on what you're doing at An Academy. Uh, of course, we will uh, continue to see it. Uh, go all the places that you just mentioned it will thanks a lot and uh, where can someone reach out to you uh, whoever's listening to the show on twitter maybe uh, or how do how does one get in touch how would you prefer why why do you want to reach out to me just <laughs> focus in on case in, oh <laughs> lovely no but if they do i i think twitter is probably the best way or uh, i i also respond to emails when i think they are worth responding so it's gorav at anacademy.com are, are you doing angel investing yourself i have uh, invested in this this app called bolo i have invested in mpl and then open talk by somit very small checks because i have known the founders and right. that's about it but no nothing nothing yeah. as if, if 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 i know someone and i love the product and just just like a gesture but i don't i, I think investing is also a full time thing and uh, one should not do it yeah. as a like a hobby right all right great to know thanks so much and of course uh, thanks yeah, for coming just uh, i'd like to let everybody know please do give us a ratings on itunes or wherever <coughs> you listen to the podcast just give us a rating that helps drop a review also if you want to join our slack channel please go to the website ibmpodcast.com/junior1 or there is a button saying invite me to slack or join slack and uh, send us your email and we'll invite you to join the channel all right thank you so much gorav thanks a lot Amit, what do you think about starting a dating podcast? Uh, to be honest, I think that idea is kind of garbage. Sure, just like dating then. Oh, we could call it dating as garbage. Oh. Uh, we could talk to people about their sad dating lives. Okay, I'm not so sure about that. And we can discuss our terrible sex lives. Okay, definitely not that. We could talk about how there's no such thing as love and it's all a load of crap and nothing can ever truly bring meaning to our lives. Okay, you might need some help there. All right, it's a yes then. Dating is garbage. Every week we break down all things from dating apps, social media, texting, calling, dating rules and more with some really cool people. Episodes out every Thursday on the IVM Podcasts app or wherever you get your podcasts. The most engaging and the most useful conversations you may have in your life are likely to be with your most challenging customers. Hi, I'm Ambi Parmeshwaran. and on this podcast i will take you through my book sponge leadership lessons i learned from my clients packed with real stories about real people but most of all packed with the innumerable lessons i soaked up from some of the most iconic business leaders like ratan tata azim prem ji s ramadurai krishan bhai patel m damodaran dr kurian and many more don't forget to tune into the sponge podcast keep sponging to keep learning